Well, good morning everyone and welcome back. Cumberland Outdoorsman here, and today I'll be covering the restoration of an old 22 rifle. Yes, this is another one of my 22 series videos. And I think I speak on behalf of a lot of you viewers out there and subscribers in saying that we kind of share a camaraderie amongst one another. That is a love for old guns, especially old 22s. And in particular, a lot of old 22 rifles, you know, that have been out of production, no longer being made for many, many years now. And a lot of those old guns, you know, are, are guns that you grew up with, you know, as a kid. The memories come back whenever you hold one or whenever you see one, you're like, oh yeah, I had one of those when I was 12 or 15 or whatever. And I used to go out in the woods behind the house or, you know, go off with my friends and go shooting or, or whatever, you know. There's just so many special memories that surround these old guns, and that's the reason I really love presenting this subject matter to you folks out there, because, like I said, we share this camaraderie, and that's a love of these old guns. You know, and what makes them so special, they're just not made like they used to be anymore. You know, there's some special guns out there, you know, some new production guns that are really, really nice, but there's just something about the old guns, they possess a certain quality, a magic that you just can't find in new guns anymore. And I think a lot of you can agree with me on that. But anyway, I was on the phone with a friend of mine the other evening and uh, we were talking about this very thing. And he said, yeah, my son and I were cleaning out my garage and we found an old 22 rifle. And I asked him about it and he said, oh yeah, it's broken. We'll just throw it away, you know, throw it in the trash heap with all the rest of the stuff we're throwing out. And he said, well, just wait a minute now. Hold on. Let's take a look at it. So we were talking about it, and he said, do you think you might want to take a look at it and see if you can do anything with it, maybe get it back, you know, in shooting condition? I said, well, yeah, I'll be glad to look at it. And what it is, it's an old Glenfield Model 60. Here it is, folks. It's in rough shape. It really is. It's, in, it's in, been abused, you know, and it looks like it had something dropped on it at one time because the rear sight right here is bent and the stock is broken. As you can see, it's split all the way down to the trigger guard. It looks like somebody tried to tape it together with some masking tape, but the old gun is just in, in rough condition. Part of the trigger guard is broken right here. I have the other piece, so we'll be putting it back together. And I'm going to be going through the process of doing a restoration of this old gun. And I'll show you the steps that I have to undergo to uh, get her back in good, presentable condition. The barrel has rust all over it. As you can see, there's surface rust as well as the magazine tube. The screws that hold the action to the stock need to be restored. The stock itself. You know, it really needs to be refinished, as you can see here. It is an old squirrel rifle, squirrel stock. So, uh, you know, this one here is a 1979 model, just like the one I've got. The magazine tube needs to be taken apart, and it's kind of stuck there inside the magazine, so it just needs a really good cleaning. We'll be taking this old gun apart and really going through it. Um, the bolt, he thought the bolt was actually stuck the way it is right now, but when I pulled out the charging handle, it started to move forward a little bit. And with a little bit of practice and moving the bolt back and forth, it finally freed up. But I'll be taking everything apart right down to the last pin and last spring cleaning everything and getting it put back together so that it'll work flawlessly. So anyway, if you're interested in these old guns and how to restore them, or if you have one laying around that you would like to go into and, and you know, kind of rejuvenate it, so to speak, come along with me. I think you'll enjoy this video. Well, last night I went ahead and rebonded this stock where it was split you can still see the crack all the way down but it's back together really well and i started sanding on it pretty good i got most of the finish off of it and uh, 
I've been out here this morning sanding this stock down, getting the old finish off and getting all the imperfections out of the wood. And I'm hoping that once I get down and I get all this stuff sanded out, that when I put the stain on, it'll help hide that crack. If not, I guess it's going to have to do, but uh, I'm going to go with a real dark walnut stain. There you can see the grain of the wood starting to come out. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get it sanded down, get it all sanded smooth. Then I'll go over it with uh, steel wool and we'll put the stain on and we'll see how that turns out. Okay guys, I went ahead and sanded all this down real smooth. And as you can see, that crack is still apparent in the fore end of the stock, but uh, now's the time to go ahead and apply some of this stain. This is a dark walnut stain that I kind of blended myself. I just apply it with some paper towel here. So let's see how that crack is going to look after I put the stain on there. Yeah, it's you can still see it, but it, it helps hide it quite a bit. This closely resembles the original finish that they put on these Glenfield stocks. You're still going to see that crack in there, but you know what? I don't think it's going to matter that much. There you can see it's starting to blend in somewhat. <clears throat> I put a few coats of this stain on here to really darken it up and help hide that crack. Stuff dries pretty quickly. Whenever you redo these old stocks, they have a little design on them like that. Try not to eliminate that as you're sanding it. Go over that very lightly. And uh, you can preserve all the markings that were put on there by the factory. And if it's cut checkering, you really need to mask it off and go back over it with uh, checkering tools if you're going to refinish the stock in order to do it correctly. You know. One good thing about putting this stain on there, you can see if there's any scratches left in the stock where you might need to go back over it again. And uh, there's a spot here that I missed. As you can see, there's some scratches right there. So I'll have to go back over that again. I could probably leave it, but uh, I'm going to make sure that it looks nice and clean once I get done with it. One thing too that the stain does, it helps seal the stock, seal all the pores in the wood. And, uh, 
gives it a nice luster, you know. But the final finishes will be put on with polyurethane on this particular stock. And I may add a coat or two of true oil just to give it a little bit of warmth. But my main concern was this crack in this stock right here. But as that's darkening up, you can see how it's blending in pretty nicely. It's hardly noticeable now. I'm not sure what kind of wood this is. I don't know if it's birch or beech or ash or what, what they use, but it's a white wood. And I'll tell you, it really soaks up this walnut stain very nicely. You can still see a little remnant of it, but that's not bad at all, folks. That don't look too bad. I mean, we're not talking about a thousand dollar rifle here, you know, this is just an old Glenfield Model 60. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and then we'll put a few more coats on it after it dries and then I'll Spray it with some clear polyurethane to help lock in the color. And that'll be good enough, folks. Okay, folks, I went ahead and sealed and stained this stock. And uh, I'm going to put a few light coats of polyurethane on here, semi-gloss. This is what I'm going to be using just to help seal in the color and uh, the wood itself. But I went with a dark walnut stain and it fairly closely matches the uh, factory finish. So we'll get this thing hung up here. I've got it over here at my woodshed. To keep it out of the weather because we might be getting a little bit of rain today. Give you a better angle on that. All right, we'll let that dry now and uh, put on another coat here in a little while. I took the liberty of taking this uh, action apart and uh, I've got it soaking in kerosene here. And boy, I tell you, it's really, really cruddy. I can feel powder residue, it feels like sand. And uh, that stuff gums up your action. So I'm taking everything apart here and getting everything cleaned off. Kerosene does a good job of breaking all this stuff loose. But these plates that hold the action together, they seem to accumulate 
powder fouling and residue. There's the feeding throat. Get all this stuff cleaned off really well. And you'll be surprised how well these old guns will run once everything's cleaned up and re-lubed and reassembled correctly. Now I didn't go through the steps of taking this apart and I'm not going to go through it putting it back together because I've already got a video out on how to do that. I just recently posted that. So if you haven't seen that video I'll uh, leave a link in the description below where you can check out my channel. I've got several videos covering uh, the disassembly and reassembly of the Model 60 Marlin Action and it'll also apply to the Model 99 and the 795 and others so uh, if you haven't seen those videos and you own one of these rifles and you want to service them I would suggest you go to those videos because there's a lot of good information where I'll go into detail on how to properly service these rifles. But I'm going to go ahead and get all this stuff cleaned off and then I'll be back with you with another section of the restoration of this old gun. Okay guys, in order to recondition these screws, mounting screws for these old guns, this one here I've already started to work on it but it still has a little rust pitting inside the head of the screw. And this one here it's marred up just a little bit so we're going to recondition these screws and what I like to do is just uh, put them in a vise here I like to cushion the threads against the jaws of the vise because you could mess up the threads if you don't take care of those threads you know so let me zoom in on it here. I'll take a hacksaw and clean out the slot. And then what I do is I take the screw and chuck it up in my drill. Then I've got a piece of sandpaper here cushioned by this rag. And just spin the top of it against that rag there, or against that sandpaper. And that cleans it up pretty nicely. And if you want a real fine finish, you take some of this 600 grit, wet or dry. That gives you a really nice finish there. Same thing with this screw here. This would probably be okay, but I'm going to go ahead and recondition it while I've got it. I'll take a file and just kind of deburr it here. Take the burr off of it. Those sharp edges where somebody used the wrong screwdriver. You can kind of feel to see if the uh, edges are gone. 
Now this will take the bluing off, but we're going to re-blue it anyway, so I'll show you a real easy trick on how to re-blue these screw heads. Same thing here. Okay, now we'll put the fine finish on it. Now the next step is to heat these screws. I just sit them in my vise like this. I don't tighten them down. Just sit them in there. Now you can cold blue these screws with Super Blue by Birchwood Casey or maybe this Brownells Oxfo Blue which is really good stuff but uh, I'm going to show you a way that I do it that's probably more durable. And what I'm going to do is heat these screws up in my vise here and it'll give them a nice color. Propane torch here. Just heat them nice and evenly. You'll see the color change pretty quickly. There, you see how that changed? You just keep heating it. Unless you want that blue color, it's up to you. Want a nice oxide blue black color. Then I'll take some of this spray lube. WD 40 will work. And that actually helps darken it up a little bit and it also preserves the color as it dries. I think what it does is it actually absorbs some of the carbon out of the oil. I'm going to let it sit there and cool off and we'll move on to the next step. Now one thing I wanted to point out, this is what that screw looks like after I restored the finish on it and as you can see the bluing blends in very nicely with the rest of the screw. All I did was recondition the top, got all the burrs off of it and Heated it up to re-blue the surface finish of it. And that's what it looks like. Okay folks, last night I took this barrel out of the action and I soaked it down with mineral oil because it has surface rust all over it. I'm going to show you a little trick on how to get this surface rust off without damaging the bluing. You get an old penny like this one here. This is a 1963. Take a little bit of kerosene and rub it. You can hear it. You can hear that rust. There you can see it as it's coming off. This gun was shot and then kind of thrown in the corner. It was never cleaned, never taken care of. There's a pretty good chunk of rust right there. This penny will take it off without scratching the bluing because copper is soft you know you're not going to damage the penny really you might make it a little shinier but uh, 
This penny can go right back into circulation after you do this. <laughs> You're just using it as a tool. There you can see a slurry of rust building up on the barrel. Sorry about the background noise. Our neighbor down here is running a leaf blower. But anyway, I'm going to go over this pretty thoroughly. The mineral oil really helped loosen it up after soaking all night and kind of softened the rust up. I ran some patches down through the bore while I had the barrel off and I'm happy to say that it's just as shiny as a new dime inside. There's no rust, no pitting, no damage at all to the rifling. Still looks fresh and sharp. For anybody that has an old gun out there that has some rust on the barrel or other parts, this is a very easy trick. You can use WD-40 or uh, Hoppy's number nine or whatever. Some people even suggest using Croil and that Croil is really good stuff, but kerosene works just as well. You know, it cuts right through that rust. Then you can take some steel wool, soak it, and go over it. And boy, that really shines it up. Look at there, folks. Didn't hurt that bluing one bit and restored the finish quite well. There's still a little bit of speckling on there, but you know, I can live with that. You can really go over it. and uh, do a good job and uh, you'll have the sense of pride of showing that gun to friends and family members after you're finished with it and if they saw it before then you have something to be proud of. Yeah. That looks pretty good folks. I mean, by comparison, <laughs> I'm pretty well pleased with that. Same thing with the magazine tube. It's got rust on it. There you can see it. You can see all that rust. I'll give you a close-up there. That penny will take it right off. See that reddish brown color? That's rust. That's been dissolved and lifted off of the finish. And I'll wipe it off with the towel where you can see it. See that? I'll have to go over it quite a bit more, but uh, I'll go over it with steel wool again after I'm done with the penny. I can still feel that roughness in it there. And a lot of that's from handling the gun. You know, they grab the barrel with sweaty hands and this magazine tube, and then they sit it in the corner and forget about it. They never wipe it down with an oil cloth or anything like that, and no wonder they rust. I mean, it's just <laughs> common sense. This is not stainless steel, you know. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up, and I'll be back with you on the next step. Okay, sometimes the crud gets caked on to some of these older parts, and uh, I've been scrubbing this thing here, this feed throat, with this brass bristle brush, getting all the crud out of it. I mean, it was absolutely just nearly black, and I've got it restored. There's a little bit left on the front there. 
but um, these brass brushes, or you can get a small steel brush too, will make quick work of that caked on crud. This old gun here has never been cleaned, so I'm going through it pretty thoroughly. And to get to the inside here, use an old bore brush, and you can clean out the inside. We can get in all the little crevices and cracks and everything to get all that crud out of there. And then that part will be ready to put back together once we get everything dried up, cleaned off, dried up, and uh, re-lubed. But even things like this hammer strut assembly, you know, they get this old powder fouling and residue caked onto all the parts. People talk about these old guns not being any good because they jam up and everything. Well, you know, it's like everything else. If you don't take care of it, sooner or later it's going to malfunction. So get it cleaned up. And you'll be surprised how well these old guns work. On this bolt right here, I had quite a bit of rust on the outside here. And I soaked it in kerosene. And then I went over it with some fine wet or dry and polish the surface back smooth again. Same on the other side here. You see that little bit of rust on there, just a the surface rust. Get that stuff cleaned off of there. Doesn't matter what kind of gun it is, anything can fail mechanically if it's not taken care of. That's just a plain fact. And that goes for anything mechanical. It'll only function as well as it's been maintained. So, you know. Now this old rifle, once I get it back together, will you know, function flawlessly for hundreds and hundreds of rounds, but then eventually it'll have to be taken back apart and cleaned again. You know, that's why they make gun cleaning kits. Anyway, I'm gonna let that soak a little bit longer and then go through all the rest of the parts, dry it off and reassemble it. Okay guys, just got home from work and now I wanna reassemble this gun. I've got everything apart here, but uh, I went ahead and put this action assembly back together after I got done cleaning it. That's your hammer and strut, the feeding throat, the cartridge lifter, the ejector spring, the buffer, and the disconnector. Everything's back together. And if you don't know how to do this, I've got a video out and I'll leave a link in the description below, just like I mentioned that will show you exactly how to disassemble and reassemble this entire unit right here. I went ahead and reconditioned the brass magazine tube here. And by the way, pardon my hands, but uh, I'm a mechanic by trade. I try to get them as clean as I can, but sometimes it's just impossible to totally clean them. But either way, uh, I've got the barrel and the outer magazine housing here reconditioned and uh, lightly oiled with mineral oil. I've got the receiver put back together with the bolt, the main spring here with the uh, spring guide installed, and I've got the trigger housing reconditioned. This piece here was broken off, okay, and what I did is I cleaned that off real good, degreased it, I super glued it back together and then I drilled a hole from here up at an angle into this other piece here and threaded it and then I filled it with super glue and put a screw back in there. So that screw and that glue and everything's holding that piece together solidly now. The trigger's back together, the safety's working like it should. And here I've got the stock. Everything is ready to be put back together. This is uh, three coats of uh, semi-gloss. And I went with a dark walnut color. I think 
I kind of brought the grain out in the wood and I preserved all the lines so it's just like factory with all of the impressions like the squirrel here and the oak leaves on the forend. So let's go ahead and get it put back together here. We'll put the trigger assembly back in and then this little piece here is what holds that in there. You want to put it with the nose down into that second hole here from the end. Get your screwdriver and just lightly snug it down right now. You don't want to totally tighten it down. Just kind of get it in there and Okay, now that's in place. Now I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this action assembly. You want to cock the hammer back. And with the bolt already installed and in the closed position, you want to align everything here. You got a barrel bolt that goes in the rear. Now this is for the older Marlins and Glenfields. The newer ones just have a pin right here and back here you've got a plastic uh, push pin that goes in. But on these older guns everything's made out of steel. You got these two screws here. I just hand start everything first because I don't want to cross thread anything. And this barrel bolt goes together just like this. Now I can go ahead and snug this down. Okay, make sure the safety is working good, okay, put the action back into the stock, all these screw heads have been reconditioned and boy I tell you it really helps the looks of a gun when your screws aren't all marred up and chewed up on the edges and they got nice clean slots gun just really looks almost new then or it does look new okay get all these snug down good now that little rifle is ready for service Bolts locking back like it should. Let's load a few rounds in it and see how well it shoots. Okay guys, it's getting a little bit late, but I've got time enough to go ahead and try this little rifle out. We'll get her loaded up here. Uh, seven rounds is enough for now. All right, let's try it out here. And the gun's empty works flawlessly folks. Well I hope you enjoyed the restoration of this little Glenfield here and I'm sure my friend Mark is really going to appreciate it. Gun runs just like a brand new one. Now all I got to do is get it sighted in and get it ready for him and I can't wait to see the look on his face. Well folks that's pretty much it. 
I want to thank you for coming along. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And until next time, remember, if you like to go hunting, fishing, camping, shooting, hiking, whatever your outdoor activity happens to be, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And also, hit that like button, smash the bell icon, and subscribe. That way you'll know when more videos like this one will be coming your way. I'll see you guys next time.